Hello, my name is Irma Marshall. I'm a Master Gardener with the Duval County Extension Office. I've been a Master Gardener for almost five years, and during that time I have been working in the Junior Master Gardener program teaching plant science. And now we're going to discuss the fascinating insect that's the butterfly. It is my favorite insect. I have actually grown probably 300 butterflies myself at home. Did you know that there are over 17,500 different species of butterflies in the world? And 750 in the U.S. We're going to talk about the adult butterfly. You might have already seen a video having to do with the egg and the larvae and the chrysalis. We're going to talk about once it matures and emerges from the chrysalis as an adult. I'm going to, uh, you're going to have a worksheet that looks like this and it's a picture of a butterfly and it has, it's numbered and on the bottom it has a word bank. We find that word banks are always good. So we'll go through each of these and there's nine different categories and I'm going to ask you to please complete it as I'm speaking. All right, let's start with the antenna. The antenna is used by the butterfly, believe it or not, to smell. And they have receptors on the antenna that helps them detect food, helps them detect their mate. And they, what happens is the probos, proboscis and the antenna work hand in hand. And the proboscis is, if you take a look at your anatomy of the butterfly, it comes, when the butterfly emerges, it, it's in two pieces. What happens is the butterfly, the very first thing it has to do is to take the proboscis and merge it together. So it takes about a half an hour for that to, to work where the proboscis is pushed together and the butterfly furls it and unfurls it, furls it and unfurls it until it's complete. Without the proboscis, the butterfly can't eat and it won't make it if it, if it doesn't completely unfurl. It's like a drinking straw. It's what the butterfly uses to eat. Then it's used to suck nectar from flowers and some butterflies have a longer uh, proboscis than others and they can use, they can go to flowers that are short and then others can actually go to a flower that's long like a, a bell and put their proboscis inside to drink and to get the nourishment that they need. As part of our worksheet, Number one is head, as we discussed. Number two is the antenna. Now number three is the proboscis. And what I would like for you to do, and look at this picture, here is the butterfly's proboscis. It is completely circled. And if you would take the two pinchers that are on the butterfly and draw a circular proboscis. That will help the butterfly to eat. Next is the compound eye. And when you look at this eye close up, you can see it's very large. The butterfly can't really see very far, only about 10 feet. They have thousands of individual lenses on their compound eyes, and they can see ultraviolet light. So if they're looking out as they're flying over a field, flowers have ultraviolet leaves. They can see the ones that they're looking for and that's how they find their food. Also on this, this worksheet, number four, are the compound eyes. And you can actually see on this particular picture the lenses, all the lenses that pick up the ultraviolet uh, flowers where the butterfly can identify what it's eating and possible mates. 
Now the next part of the butterfly, and it's number five, is the thorax. The thorax is a very important part of the butterfly. A lot of different uh, parts of the anatomy come out of the thorax. So the thorax holds the legs of the butterfly. So the butterfly has six legs. Insects have six legs. One pair, four legs in the front, mid legs, and hind legs. <laughs> and all six are jointed, so just like us, they are jointed. And guess what? They can taste with their feet. So their legs are very important too. When they fly around, the female butterfly can land on a particular plant and taste that this is the plant that they're going to lay their eggs on, which is great, I think. Then the hind wings and the front wings are attached to the thorax as well. And they're, they are controlled, just like the legs are controlled by the thorax. Now, the abdomen, which is the piece behind it, that's number six. The abdomen holds all the rest of the organs that the butterfly needs to digest food. Now, male and female butterflies are different sizes. And when you think about it, the female has to hold the eggs. And therefore, the female is larger than the male. Now, the wings, and I've seen this many times when I've watched butterflies coming out of their chrysalis emerging, they come out and their wings are little shriveled up tiny wings. And it takes about a half an hour or so for them to move their wings out and they just keep contracting their wings and push liquid from their thorax into the wings. And they keep working on that and then once they're the wings are completely formed, they hang for about two to three hours until they're able to fly. And guess what? The wings are transparent. Well, how could that be? Well, the wings have tiny scales. The scales reflect the light, uh, lots of different colors of, of light, but underneath, the wing is formed of lots of layers of protein that makes up the exoskeleton, which is uh, not like us. We have an internal skeleton. They have exoskeletons. These are the scales that absorb the warmth from the sun. Butterflies are cold-blooded, which means that they can't regulate their, their body heat. So they change their, their body changes according to the temperature outside. Now, when it gets down to 55 or lower, the butterfly cannot fly. The ideal temperature for a butterfly is 85 degrees. <clears throat> and that way they can protect themselves from predators, but if they get too cold, they are in danger. That's why butterflies migrate or move on when the fall comes in and starts to get cooler. <laughs>